In the last segment, we introduced the important concept of compactness. Now, we often need to verify whether a set is compact, but this is not easy to do based on the definition, which relies on open covers and subcovers. So in this segment, we're going to link the property of being compact to two other properties, the property of being closed and the property of being bounded, which are a lot easier to verify. So here's the plan. We'll start by defining boundedness for sets in arbitrary metric spaces. Then we'll show that a closed subset of a compact metric space is itself compact. And this will allow us to deduce that any closed and bounded subset of Rn is compact. And then we'll show that a compact subset of any metric space must be closed and bounded, which will take us to the main result. And that states that in Euclidean space, a set is compact if and only if it's closed and bounded. So let's start by defining boundedness. We say that a set S in a metric space X is bounded if there exists some epsilon positive and some element X in the metric space such that S is contained in the epsilon neighborhood of X. What this means is that the distances between the points in S can't be arbitrarily large, they are bounded. Now to our first result, we'll show that any closed subset of a compact metric space is compact. So suppose that X is a compact metric space and S is a subset of X that's closed. We want to show that S must be compact. Now since the complement of any closed set is open, we know that SC, the complement of S, is open. Now let G alpha be a collection of open sets that's an open cover for S. Now if we take the union of G alpha with the complement of S, we get an open cover for X. This is because G alpha is an open cover for S, and the complement of S is an open cover for itself, and X is simply the union of S and its complement. Now since X is compact, this particular open cover must have a finite subcover. Let's call this G beta. So G beta is a collection of sets that's a subset of the collection G alpha union SC. And this is a finite subcover for X. Now G beta may or may not contain the complement of S. If it does, we simply remove it from this collection. And note that G beta with SC removed is a subset of the collection G alpha and is also a finite collection of sets. So we have a finite subcover for S. And since G alpha was just an arbitrary open cover for S, we know that every open cover for S has a finite subcover, and S is therefore compact. Now if you think back to the last segment, we showed that the n-dimensional cube is a compact subset of Rn. And we just showed that any closed subset of a compact metric space is itself compact. Now any bounded subset of Rn must be contained in some n-dimensional cube. And so therefore an immediate consequence of the result that we've just proved is that any closed and bounded subset of Rn is compact. Let's just go through the details. Suppose that S is a subset of Rn which is closed and bounded. Then there must exist some point X in Rn and some epsilon positive that S is contained in the epsilon neighborhood of X. Now the epsilon neighborhood of X itself must be contained in some n-dimensional cube if we take a large enough cube. And so therefore S is a closed subset of a compact metric space and S is therefore compact from the result we just proved. So we conclude that any closed and bounded subset of Rn is compact. Now to finish up, we want to show that any compact subset of a metric space must be closed and bounded. And this is true for an arbitrary metric space, not just Euclidean space. Here's the proof. We'll do it in two parts. First, we'll show that compact sets must be bounded. So let X be a metric space, and suppose that S is a subset of X that's compact. We want to show that S is bounded. For any point X in S, consider the following collection of sets. We'll take the neighborhood of x with radius 1, the neighborhood with radius 2, and so on. Now this is an infinite collection of sets, which is obviously an open cover for S. Now since S is compact, this must have a finite subcover. In other words, there must exist a finite set of radiuses, m1 to mk, such that the union of the neighborhoods corresponding to these is a cover for S. That's because every open cover for S has to have a finite subcover. Now if we let epsilon be the maximum radius out of all of these, we see that S is contained in the epsilon neighborhood of X. In other words, S is bounded. So we've shown that in any metric space, a set that's compact must be bounded. Now to finish up, we want to show that compact sets are closed. So suppose S is compact. If it's equal to X, it must be closed because it clearly contains all its limit points. Now suppose it's not equal to X, and consider any point x in the complement of s. Now if you take any point y in s, there exists a radius epsilon y such that the epsilon y neighborhood of x and the epsilon y neighborhood of y has empty intersection. Now why is this? 
it's because x belongs to the complement of s and y belongs to s. So therefore x and y are distinct elements. There must be a positive distance between them. And you can just take epsilon y to be any number less than half of this distance. Now if you take the collection of neighborhoods where we take the epsilon y neighborhood for each y in s, this collection is obviously an open cover for s. Every point in s has a neighborhood that's included in this collection. Now since s is compact, this open cover must have a finite subcover. In other words, there must be a finite set of points in S, which we call T, such that the finite collection of neighborhoods centered on Y in T is a cover for S. And this is just because S is compact, and so every cover has a finite subcover. Now define epsilon to be the smallest of the epsilon Ys for this finite collection of points in T. It's a finite collection, so the minimum exists. Remember that X is a point in the complement of S, and the epsilon y neighborhood of x has an empty intersection with the epsilon y neighborhood of y for every y, and in particular for every y in t. And so therefore, I hope you can see that the epsilon neighborhood of x is fully contained in the complement of s. Now this means that x is an interior point of sc, and since x was an arbitrary point of sc, every point of sc is an interior point. This of course means that the complement of s is an open set, and so s itself is a closed set. So we've proved that compact sets are closed, and we've already proved that compact sets are bounded. So putting these two facts together, we see that any compact subset of a metric space must be both closed and bounded. Now let's put together all the results we've obtained in this segment. We know that any closed and bounded subset of Rn is compact, and we know that any compact subset of a metric space must be closed and bounded. And putting these two facts together gives us the main result we were after which is that a subset of Euclidean space is compact if and only if it's closed and bounded. And this is enormously useful because when we want to verify whether a subset of Rn is compact, all we need to do is to verify that it's closed and bounded, which is a lot easier to do in practice. And that's it for this segment.